Get on to rock, get up to burn, stand with the fight, ever feel your desire. One day I noticed that my life was broken. It was not me who was controlling. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Mid-Atlantic Bowling League's Dungeon Bowl. It's week number six. Here in the final competition, final open competition of the season, and we are in Division A tonight. Tonight it's going to be the Masters of Mammal versus the Arendelle Icebreakers, El Nuberino versus Chime, Dark Elves versus Norse. Masters of Mammal are still in this competition. They must get a win tonight to stay alive, and they're going to be looking to do it against this Norse team. In first place in Division A, a, don a, a donkey teeth. Donkey teeth, <laughs> coached by Dead Fred, a Wood Elf team, 5 0 1 is their record. Followed very, very closely behind by the Nidabell Darlings, coached by Dead the Minotaur, a Dwarven team, 5 0 1 is their record. And the Masters of Mammal, they are up this evening. El Luberino's team, a Dark Elf team, 3 1 1 is their record. Those are the three teams vying for one of the top two spots in this division to make the cut to top four after week seven. And in Division B, a friendly neighbor Kaiju, they've already earned their spot. Merrick's team, a Lizardman team, 5-1-0 is their record. They are followed by Mootland Scout Troop number 079, Artificial Bunnies Halfling team, 4-0-2 is their record. And apropos of Nuffle, Clyphius's team, another Halfling team, 3-2-1. They're sitting in third place with 11 points. First up this evening, the Masters of Mammal. I haven't even looked at his stadium. Let's see if he's got something. He does not. <laughs> of course it's Castle Grayskull. <laughs> they're coming to a TV of 1640, sort of. Uh, they're gonna have a 10 player roster. They've got to pick up someone else, whether that's a journeyman or not. He's a, that's going to bump his TV up by at least 70K. It's gonna depend on what he picks up here. He's got 210K in the bank. He's gonna to wanna to spend some of that money as well. Actually, let's see. Uh, 60k. So if he got if he got a lineman, he, it would only bump his TV up by 10k, because currently 60k is counting against his TV. Um, he pick up a lineman for 70k, so he dip below the th the 150k threshold on his uh, in his treasury, and then he would bump up by 10 more. All right, but enough of that. that. <laughs> He's got uh, four blitzers, two, one, two, three, four linemen, uh, two witch elves on the roster. Two linemen are going to be injured and out this week. He has Stinkor, who has picked up the block skill. Skeletor the Blitzer, he's down a point in AG, but he's a blodger with sidestep. And uh, Ferlane, the number three lineman, has picked up Russell Tila is a level four witch elf. She is a blodger with sidestep. She's also picked up the tackle skill. The sorceress, uh, the number six witch elf, also a blo uh, not a blodger. I'm sorry. Has dodge, has frenzy, of course, and jump up as witch elves do. But has picked up the Russell skill. He man is the number four blitzer. He has block. He has tackle. He has dauntless. He has mighty blow because, of course, he's he man. Duncan, the level four blitzer, is a blodger with leap and strip ball. He's a uh, Effectively, a, a Dark Elf War Dancer. Ram Man is uh, the number 10 Blitzer. He's a Blodger. Merman, the number 11 Lineman, has Russell and Dodge. Whiplash has picked up an extra point of strength. Three team rerolls, one Apothecary, eight Fan Factor. We'll see what uh, the Masters of Memo picked up uh, in just a second. They're going to be up against the Arendelle Icebreakers. They're coming in at a TV of 1490. That means they're 
they're looking at about 210k in petty cash. Um, we'll we'll uh, we'll see what he actually gets in just a minute. Hank Ranger asks, "Who was Furlane in Masters of the Universe?" I don't think they were anyone. <laughs> I don't think they were anyone. <laughs> the Arendelle Icebreakers, they have Marshmallow, the Yeti, they have a bunch of linemen, two off wearers and uh, two Berserkers and a runner. Uh, as you can see, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of block on this roster. Uh, the Yeti is the big guy. He has Claw, Disturbing Presence, which will be uh, uh, maybe a big help for the Arendelle Icebreakers this evening. He has Frenzy, Block, and Mighty Blow. He's got Oaken, the number five lineman who's picked up tackle. He's got Lieutenant Matias, who has a uh, uh, dirty player. Sven, the off winner. The both off winners have Frenzy and Block. Citrone, the level four off winner, has picked up Guard and Mighty Blow. He has Hans, who's uh, the Berserker. He's picked up Mighty Blow. Kristoff has picked up the Mighty Blow. Uh, has picked up Mighty Blow. Has picked up Dodge, making him a blogger. And oh my. That is piling on. What a great pickup. The Duke of Weston is going to round out this roster. The number 11 roster, number 11 roster, the number 11 runner is a blodger with sure hands and dauntless three team rerolls, one cheerleader, two coach assistant, five fan factor, and of course the oppo. How do the two teams play tonight? Let's take a look at this Norse team. As you can see, every single player on this roster has block that is huge. Five players have frenzy that can be huge, but uh, otherwise a pretty fragile team with just an AV of seven. Now, he does have Marshmallow with uh, with Mighty Blow. He has three other players with Mighty Blow, one of which has Piling On. This is such a great... Uh, man, I love this piece right here. Kristoff, what an amazing piece. So he has Block and Dodge. He's a blodger. Very, very resilient. Block also great uh, when you're on offense. Frenzy is going to allow him to chuck more Block Dice. Uh, if all goes according to plan, that could be up to, to four Block Dice, maybe even six Block Dice. Then... If he gets the block in the knockdown, Mighty Blow is going to give him a plus one to his armor roll or his injury roll, whichever he needs it on. And then on top of that, he's got piling on. This means he can choose to go prone. He won't have to make an armor roll if he does. And if he does, he can re-roll the armor roll or the injury roll. This is a absolutely huge combination. Mighty Blow and piling on. This is a kill player. He is looking to murder... Dark Elves with this piece. I love this player so much. <laughs> uh, he's got lots of Mighty Blow. He's got lots of Block. He's got lots of Frenzy. He is going to be looking to smash these Dark Elves. That, that's really the MO for him tonight. It's go in, take the blocks, try to remove players. He's got to do that because otherwise he's pretty fragile himself. Now he's a little more resilient with everybody having the block skill, which is great. That means the both standing result is not going to affect him. Um, but... Otherwise, he, he really, really, really wants to get these removals and he's got the, the skill ups to do it. I really like what Chime has done with these skill ups. I think these are great skills. Uh, he's got uh, he's got a tackle player that if he can put into a key position, he's up against a team that wants to dodge away. I think that's great as well. He's got um, uh, uh, not sneaky get uh, dirty player. He's got dirty player, which is I think is a great skill here. You can see he gets a plus one to his armor or his injury roll when he's fouling. So it's basically mighty blow for a foul. I think that's a great pickup as well. Um, really solid roster in my opinion. And uh, if he can get all these dice off, right? He's got all this frenzy, all this block. If he can get these block dice off, all this mighty blow. Plus he's got mighty blow and piling on. He can remove players. It's going to be a. F oh. I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> El Nuverino, on the other hand, has a Dark Elf team. So they are defined by having an AG of four. AG is 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 really the, f not the, I shouldn't say the focus, but there's so many die rolls that uh, revolve around AG in this version of the rules anyway, um, that makes an AG of four really, really, really good. Dodges, uh, positive dodges are a two plus. He's got the Dark Elf roster. So a lot of these players have an AV of eight, versus uh, most elves that have an AV of seven. That is a big, big difference. Uh, not to be outdone, El Nuberino has his own Mighty Blow player. He has Dauntless and Block. Dauntless means uh, all things being equal. With one assist, he'll get a two-die block. With a da uh, Dauntless, you roll a D6, you add that to your strength. If you exceed your opponent's strength, then you can match your opponent's strength. So he can go up against that big guy uh, with one assist, get the two-die block, and be good to go. He's got Whiplash with a strength of four. That'll absolutely... Oh. I just saw what he picked up. <laughs> He's got the old Dark Elf Assassin. Let's go. 
<laughs> Many faces <laughs> has been added to the roster here. He's got stab and shadowing. So stab is basically a, a, a it's a block where you don't have to roll the block dice. It's very, very strong. Shadowing is going to allow him to roll a die and follow up uh, players that are marking him. Uh, or that he has marked. So if he gets on the ball carrier and the ball carrier tries to dodge away, watch out. Many faces is coming for you. <laughs> Skeletor is a blodger with sidestep. That's a great skill combo, but he's losing the, the power of elves. His AG is down to three. Um, he's got a number of blodgers, which is, we, we talked about how the Norse team wants to, to down these players and remove them off the pitch. Elden Bruno has done a great job of picking up block on a lot of players. He's got the blitzers that, of course, start with block. Dark Elf teams can have up to four blitzers. Uh, he's naturally made a bunch of those uh, blodgers. Uh, he's got Tila, who's a blodger. That means only the pal face on a blodger is going to knock them down, and it's going to make uh, it's going to make Chine's job really difficult. He's going to need to get in there. He's going to need to maximize his dice. He's going to need to remove these players. Um, he does have the. Uh, the dirty player, so maybe he'll go in for the fouls. Maybe he'll get a bribe. We'll see. Um, but he's got to watch out for he. As a Norse team, you don't want to be up against a team that has this much block. You want to have the, your advantage, which is block and frenzy. And he's up against a team that has block and frenzy. And on top of that, they can throw. They can run. Uh, they've got a lot of speed. They got a lot of AG. <laughs> it's. <laughs> this is a really solid team. This is why El Nubarino is in third place. El Nubarino on offense is going to want to threaten everything that he can, threaten the pass, threaten the run, spread out that defense so they're not grouping up, so they're not getting their assists, so that their blocks are a little bit weaker. Whereas on uh, on defense, El Nubarino probably dodging away a bunch. He does have blodgers, so maybe he'll take some marks. And of course, he's got that assassin where he's going to try to get that stab off as much as possible. Um, but uh, three three rerolls a piece is where they want to be. Uh, boy, <laughs> I think it's anybody's game tonight. Um, the Arendelle Icebreakers could come out on top. The Masters of Mammal could come out on top. If the Masters of Mammal win the coin toss, they'll almost... Well, you know what? It's two fragile teams. I don't know. Normally, a, a fragile team um, wants to be on defense. I think maybe... I think maybe the Arendelle Icebreakers, if they win the coin toss, they want to be on defense to start with because they have all that AV7... Uh, but we'll see. He's got some uh, inducement choices as well. Uh, for Norse, what can he pick up with Norse? Uh, he could pick up Wilhelm Cheney. That's a strength four uh, werewolf. He's got clutch, clutch, catch claw, frenzy, and what else? Wrestle. Uh, that'd be a good pickup. He could dip into his treasury and pick up Zara. Zara is a player that has stab. He could have his own stabby player. Uh, Zara has a strength of four as well. Um, and she's a blodger <laughs> and she has Dauntless. <laughs> so it could be stab for stab tonight. Man, it could be stab central USA tonight. We'll see. Or he can go traditional. He could, uh, he could pick up a wizard. Maybe he picks up some bribes to foul. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, Bribes might not be a, a bad play just because uh, all those blodgers, it's going to be difficult to to knock them down and uh, a bribe can make it easier to, to get the removals he's looking for. Arendelle Icebreakers with all that frenzy, they're going to have to be very, very careful about their positioning and the blocks they take. Frenzy With frenzy, it's very easy to have players pulled out of position. He's not going to want it that. Uh, even if he gets a two-die block out of it, it might not be a good thing to, to take it. Uh, he does have the Yeti with Disturbing Presence. Uh, disturbing Presence, you can see, is this uh, this big, uh, was it 9, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 by 7 square. Um, so three spaces out from where he is. Uh, this is going to impact passes. Whether he is standing or not, this is going to impact passes. He went for Boomer instead. So Boomer, <laughs> Boomer is a secret weapon. He's a bomber deer that cost him 60k. So he must have picked up something else. And indeed he did. He picked up a wizard. So uh, Boomer's going to be on the roster. We'll see if he's on the pitch for this half. It looks like he is. Masters of Mammal in defense, setting up with, uh, uh, with a Chevron defense here. Three players on the line. You can see the assassin that he's picked up here. Many faces. Number four. Ready to go. 
Yeti on the line. Ready to take a two die block in someone's face. Remember, he does have Frenzy. So if he gets the knockdown, uh, and it's not like, say, a both down result, he's going to have to follow up. He's going to have to be very, very careful of those Frenzy blocks just to make sure he doesn't have, he, he doesn't move players so far out of, out of the way that they get picked off. Of course, he's also going to have to watch out for the follow-up block, the Frenzy follow-up. If you get a push on the first result, you don't lock down uh, your opponent. With Frenzy, you must take another block. That second block could be disadvantage, right? You could have gone from a two-die block down to a one-die block, or worse, you could have gone into an uphill block situation. He's going to have to be careful of that as well. Four players on the line. Let's see. Doesn't need... Doesn't need the assist, so he just wants four on the line. That's fine. Here's the kick. The weather's going to stay the way it is. It's going to be a touchback. Looks like the ball will be thrown into the hands of the Duke of Wesselton. He is the lone runner for the Arendelle Icebreakers. He is a blodger with Dauntless. Turn one for the Icebreakers. They do have a wizard on deck. Probably don't start the drive with the the uh, the Yeti block. But maybe he does. Yeti has loner. It could be a bad way to start this game if he doesn't get through the loner roll. Or if he needs a re-roll, that is, and uh, can't do it due to loner. Two die block to get things started. He's going to start with the number eight old pointer. I think that's a good, good start. It's going to be a sidestep push here, and he must follow up. It's another block out of this as well. Again, has to follow up. But starting with Citrone here, he has the guard skill. So Citrone will still lend an assist to a block. I think this is a good way to start the game. Yeah, now he gets to die block on Ferlane and gets the knockdown. He's looking for a 9 plus. Doesn't get it. Really good action order there to start this, uh, start this game. When you're taking a block, if you have somebody, if you have a friendly next to you, whether you're causing a block or, or eating a block, if you have a friendly next to you that is not marked by some other opposing piece, they will give you an assist. Uh, next to you, meaning uh, next to uh, next to the person you're engaged with, the opponent you're engaged with. They will give you an assist, um, and that'll give you a plus one to your strength when you're comparing the strengths for the block. Good stun here on Syncor by the Yeti. But uh, if if that player is marked by some other piece, they will not give an assist. Unless you have the guard skill. And then uh, you will always lend an assist, provided you're on your feet. Ball's going to advance now to the Arendelle Icebreaker Zone two-yard line, dead center on the pitch where the grass is dying. <laughs> going to check a bomb. Boy, we'll see if this works out. Disturbing presence in play. So he's uh, being affected by his own Yeti here. Oh, no. The ball's been caught by Merman. Merman gets to chuck this bomb now. He's going to chuck it right back at the ball carrier. Let's go. Hey! <laughs> Oh, me, oh my, what a way to start this game. <laughs> Chuck the grenade, got hit with his own, his Yeti's own disturbing presence. Pow, pow. Ball was caught by Merman, or ball, the bomb was caught by Mer Merman. Bombs can be caught, they're passes like anything else. Um, you can throw them to a teammate. You can throw them to an opponent. Uh, if the opponent catches it, then they get to throw the bomb. Stab Blitz to get things started. So this is... Uh, is it's a block without the block roll, so it's straight to armor. And uh, 
he needs an A plus because uh, Francis the second has an AV of seven. Didn't get it. But if you fail that armor break, uh, it's not a turnover. That really, other than not having to roll block dice, the fact that it's not a turnover is what makes it really, really strong. Ram Man is going to run down the hole and uh, get behind the ball. He's got a mark with many faces on the ball currently. in the assist. Two die block on Citrone. Gets the knockdown here. He's looking for a 9 plus. Doesn't get it. Citrone, the old winner with the guard skill. He's now plucked out of position. This is what we were talking about a moment ago with Frenzy. It's very easy to get plucked away from your, your team and and be separated and, and therefore uh, less effective or just straight up ineffective. Mark taking on the number four Berserker, Kristoff. Four seconds to go. Is that Sorceress? It's Hila, the Witch Elf. Going to move into center pitch, as is the Sorceress. Both wide zones being vacated by the Masters of Mammal. Going for the ball pickup. 50-50 pickup. Works out. Two plus dodge. Works out. That's the end of turn one. And in turn one, the defense has recovered this ball. It's in the hands of Duncan, the number nine Blitzer. He's a blodger. Well done by El Nuberino. Turn two for the Icebreakers. Number seven, Old Foyner, takes a mark on Ram Man. It takes it on the left side of Ram Man. Ram Man could very easily dodge out to the right here currently. It's two plus dodge away. Takes a mark on Merman. This will give him a block with Kristoff. Uh, it's going to be a frenzy block, so he'll have to follow up. Might hope for the... Uh, well, he can't hope for the both down result because Merman has Wrestle. Wrestle means on a both down result, you can choose to use your Wrestle skill, and then both players will go down, but there'll be no armor break. Going for the bomb pass. Oh, you can't knock down these elves. Good pass. But... Uh, <laughs> Failed to knock anyone down. It's a four plus to knock down uh, everyone in the area. Um, didn't knock down any of these three elves. Ooh, takes a one die block on the assassin, gets a push. Alex to follow up. There's a mark on the ball carrier. Oh, tried to dodge away. And Kristoff got stunned. Tried the three plus dodge here. He had the dodge skill, had the free reroll, but Merman said, no, sir, you're not getting away from me. Turn two for the Masters of Mammal now. Hmm. Go for the standing stab, breaks armor. Got a stun on Francis II. Very good stun by the assassin. Manny faces was my favorite, my favorite Masters of the Universe toy. <laughs> I love all the Masters of the Universe toys. They've recently like re-released them. There's a whole bunch of Masters of the Universe lines now. I really wanted to collect them, but Patel couldn't couldn't get uh, their ducks in a row and couldn't couldn't commit to a timeline. So I said, um, I'm not doing this. But man, I really, really like the toys. <laughs> See, I have Black on Eric, the number three lineman. We get a knockdown here. There was Mossman. He was like covered in like 
in like fuzzy scratch and sniff like <laughs> moss. <laughs> I can't imagine what those old toys are like. That. They're, they've got to be all dried out and just flaking. Tidai Black and Lieutenant Matias gets a push here. Lieutenant Matias, he's the dirty player. Forty-five seconds left to go in turn two. The Masters of Mammal trying to decide where to go with this ball. They do have a blitz. We'll see if it's going to be against Sven or not. He tries to GFI the Sorceress into position. It's going to Sven. A team reroll fails the GFI. Man, you broke your back. That you broke your back. <laughs> Thankfully, she's only stunned. Tried to mark. Tried to mark the downfield uh, lineman here, or Berserker. Hans the Berserker failed the GFI. And now turn three back to the Arendelle Ice Breakers. That's what you were thinking of the bits. GFI, uh, GFI warning. <laughs> Two die block into double skulls. Three rolls to do a push. Both teams down to... Two re-rolls for the half. Rolls into double pals here with the Frenzy follow-up. Can't get the nine plus he's looking for. Moves Boomer into position, marks the ball carrier. That gives him an assist. He's going to get the power on the ball carrier here. Where's the ball going to scatter? It's going to scatter right behind Boomer. Very good scatter here for the Icebreakers. But uh, everyone else is marked. We'll see if they can get anybody behind the ball. Two die block with the Yeti. Frenzy follow up. This would be a knockdown. He really wants a 9+. plus. Doesn't get it. Dark Elves, the most resilient elves in the entire game. They have an AD of 8 instead of an AD of 7. Tudai Blitz here gets the POW of Stinkor. I think this is a good Blitz, and this will be able to move Citroen into position to try to protect this ball. Oh, is he going for the ball pickup? Oh, that, oh boy. That was a 50-50 ball pickup. I think that was really risky. Um, just because if he didn't get the pickup, that ball could have easily scattered right into a favor favorable position for the Masters of Mammal. I think he might be, have been served a little better, maybe parking right here or right here or something. <laughs> Doug from Minotaur says, tough elves. What an oxymoron. <laughs> <gasps> Tries to stab the Duke of Wesselton, but uh, snake eyes. On well, snake eyes, you should just fall on your face. <laughs> you should stab yourself in the eye. <laughs> Often we talk about how action order is paramount in this game. He has a lot of players prone on the ground. He rolled some dice here, but remember, stab is safe. So even if he fails stab, it's not going to be a turnover, so that's fine. Still, he's taking a block first here, and this... Uh, he had a player to move with Stinkor. Stinkor might be the player he's going to try to get onto the ball, maybe. And this is why he's taking this order. Everyone else, he's probably thinking about dodging away. Two die block on Eric gets a push. Yeah. All right, good dodge by Ram Man. It's on the left side of the ball now.
Fail dodge by number eight. Lost his blitz, failed the dodge. That's going to be a turnover. Turn four for the icebreakers now. Let's we'll see if they can recover this ball. They're going to have a block against Ram Man. Currently uh, a two die block, but Ram Man is a blodger, so he'd beat a pal. But really, really, he's just looking to push him out of the way. The problem is on the follow up, he's going to have to do something about Whiplash. <laughs> Why push onto the ball? <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> all right, well now, <laughs> now the ball's over here across the line of scrimmage. <laughs> oh. What do you do now? <laughs> what do you do now? Oh, he tried to try to shadow the elf winner to get here, it looks like. Which may be a better position. Two die block gets the pal here against Merman. Can he break armor? He can! Got an injury! Well done. Merman's out of the game. One man player advantage now for the Arendelle Icebreakers. Two die block against this assassin gets a pal. The assassin only has an AV of seven, but unfortunately was not able to break armor. Now he's going to take a two die block against Skeletor. It's going to be a sidestep. Is Skeletor going to? He's not going to sidestep on the ball. He sidesteps on the ball. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he's got to be careful about taking the block with Marshmallow. Marshmallow uh, with Frenzy, he's going to have to follow up if he blocks Skeletor. Unless it's... Uh, I was going to say, unless it's built down, but Skeletor has the block skill. Good jump up Blitz. Rolls into a skull. He spends the re-roll here. Gets the knockdown on Whiplash. And he's going to use Piling On. Got a stun out of it. So you can see there, he failed the armor roll. He piled on. That means he goes down prone. And uh, he gets to re-roll the armor roll. Broke the armor that time, but uh, got a stun on the injury roll. <laughs> oh, threw a grenade right at Tila. Tila, she caught that. She caught that. And now she has an opportunity to throw this ball. Or throw the grenade. Inaccurate pass. It blew up uh, safely off to the side here. <laughs> oh, bombardiers are so fun. I hate them. Like, I don't want them on my team, but I love watching them. Final turn of the first quarter now. Masters of Mammal. <laughs> the ball is on the Masters of Mammal four yard line <laughs> somehow. <laughs> Wait, does Boomer have a fancy hat? Oh, he does. He has like a fancy, like, I hesitate to call it a pirate hat, but what a, what a fancy hat. You know what? I like your style, Boomer. You look great. You look great. Tila Blitz. Witch Elf Blitz. Both standing result, unless he re-rolls this. The blitz spent. It's been a good two plus dodge to get to safety. He moves Tila off to the right side of the pitch here. Still at center pitch, but right on the dividing line between the right wide zone and center pitch. Right. 
stand up two plus dodge by Ferlane, the number three lineman. He's got to get in front of the ball. And a jump up with the Sorcerer. She moves down pitch a little bit. She's threatening to catch a ball. Currently in scoring position. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There she is. <laughs> two plus dodge by Duncan. He moves back toward the ball down the right wide zone. 15 seconds to go for the Masters of Mantle. Two players prone still. Unless he's going with he's going for the ball with He-Man. I can't imagine why He-Man's still prone. Three plus dodge by many faces. Ooh. Ooh. He is going for the ball. What a let's see if this will work out. He needs a fight. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Went for the ball there. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, man, that's some dodging. Didn't work out. I know you're elves, but... <laughs> and the ball's going to scatter one space forward again. It's now on the Masters of Mammals six-yard line. <laughs> Two die block on Ram Man. It's going to be a push. Frenzy follow-up is another push here. Ram Man will eat another block shortly. Masters of Mammal have to win tonight. If they don't, they'll be eliminated from the Dungeon Bowl. In fact, not only will they be eliminated from the Dungeon Bowl, they'll be eliminated from the season. They haven't qualified for the Blood Bowl yet. They're looking to do so here in the Dungeon Bowl. Two die blitz on the Sorceress now by Sven the Ulfwerner. It's either a both standing results or a push. It's going to frenzy to push this uh, witch off to the sideline. Gets the knockout, but doesn't break armor. Well done. Three die block now with Marshmallow gets the block. Good, good uh, restraint by Chime on the previous turn. We're talking about uh, it'd be very, very risky to take the block with Marshmallow and uh, lose a player protecting the ball. And he decided not to take that block on the previous turn. Very, very, very good decision by Chime. Already spent the blitz, but he takes a mark on Ferlane, the number three lineman, the only elf marking the ball currently. Still has a reroll. We'll see if he tries to dodge Oaken out and then maybe pull in the Duke of Wessington. He did. He did dodge him out. All right. Mark steal the witch out. Now he's got some movement with the Duke of Wesselton. He can move him right here if he wishes. Takes a mark on Duncan. Oh, boy. <laughs> what a pass. What a, what a pass. Very, very cool there. <laughs> he, he takes Boomer. He passes two spaces right behind the assassin just to keep Boomer safe. Uh, failed interception. Uh, maximize the... Whoa, did he just pick this ball up? 
Wow, well done. <laughs> well done by Chime. Uh, passes the ball right over the head of the assassin that kept Boomer safe. Uh, unfortunately, wasn't able to knock down the assassin, but I thought that was a very clever toss. Duke of Wesselton being marked by two elves currently. One's prone, one has just stood up. Skeleton, here's the blitz. One die blitz. Both standing result. Will he re-roll this? No, he says, I'm good. I'm good. Masters of Mammal with all that uh, all of those high agility players on AG4, he can easily get players into the scrum and just try to lock down this ball carrier. Pulling double duty with Stinkor there. Gets the assist for the Witch Elf block. Gets a stun out of it. Very, very well done. And shutting down this lane entirely for the Duke of Wesselton. Tries to stab Boomer, but Boomer has an AV of 9. You gotta roll a 10 plus to break armor. Didn't work out. Boomer running out of turns. He's a secret weapon. That means after uh, after the drive that he's on the pitch, he will be called off the pitch. You can use a bribe to keep him on the pitch, but Chime doesn't have one. Uses the massive move at MAF7 on that Blitzer Duncan to move all the way back into the safety position. Then he decides to GFI to get the assist on the two-die block on Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Matias here. As the wrestle skill takes the both down result. No armor break because of wrestle, uh, but he's eating up 3 MA of Lieutenant Matias. And Lieutenant Matias can't block. He'd have to blitz if he wants to roll some block dice. Good dodges by the sorceress. Three plus to a two plus dodge to get to safety. And the sorceress is going to move to mid pitch on the opposing 14 yard line. Turn six for the icebreakers. They've been able to recover this ball after losing it on turn one. But, uh,. They're running out of time to score. They have three turns left. They do have a wizard on deck. They bring in their, their guardsmen. They get a two die block on Whiplash. They're going to knock him down. Didn't break armor. He's piling on to try again and didn't break armor a second time. Sven the Ulf Werner gets into position on the Witch Elf, the Sorceress, once more. She's going to be the receiver for the Masters of Mammal if they can recover this ball. Die block by Marshmallow gets a push against He Man. Frenzy follow up here. This will be a knockdown on He Man. Can he get a 9 plus? He cannot. He has to follow up due to Frenzy. Chime making a, really making pretty good use of his block and Frenzy skills here. Uh, I'd be a lot more haphazard. He's uh, staying really composed. Really taking the blocks he needs to take and the directions and the order he needs to take them. Two die block. Gets a dodge push on skeletons. Uh, on skeleton. On Skeletor. <laughs> He's going to sidestep into another two die block. This time, got the pal. Man, what if they, <laughs> what if they released a Masters of Mammal line where everyone was just named who they are? Like, Skeleton Man and... Strong man. <laughs> Multiple faces. Ah. 
All right. Doesn't need to dodge the Duke of Wesselton now. Gives himself a tunnel to move through. He's going to advance to the opposing 10-yard line over in the left wide zone. Is he in scoring position? He's just shy of being in scoring position. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, check the bomb. That was quite quite off the mark. <laughs> Turn six now for the Masters of Mammal. Stand up whiplash. He's the strength four lineman. He is on the opposing two yard line, right in the middle of the pitch. Currently marked by Citrone, number eight, Ulfwammer. Two really, really strong teams on paper, and uh, both coaches doing a really good job with the team, in my opinion. <laughs> Brandman stands up, takes a mark on Kristoff. He's going to pick off Kristoff now. He's marked on either side. So when we talk about someone being picked off, this player, there's nowhere they can dodge that's positive. Everything has a negative modifier on on the dodge, right? So uh, because of that, because of that, it, it makes the dodge very unlikely. And this player is just going to sit put or sit still, might not even stand up. Um, he doesn't, he can't really get back into formation. So he's been picked off. Thirty seconds to go in turn six. Masters of Mammal, one re-roll remaining. They're applying pressure to this offensive pocket here. The Duke of Wesselton can score on a GFI. I imagine with a re-roll, he'll try it unless... Yeah, going for the blitz here. Good two dodges. One die blitz, rolled into a skull. He'll have to re-roll this. Boy, dodge, push. Where is he going to push him? I have a feeling. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Did have strip ball, but the ball carrier has uh, sure hands. Sure hands negate strip ball. So now the ball carrier has been pushed out of scoring position. He can technically still do it, but he, he doesn't have a positive dodge to get to the end zone. Even if he blitzes, he'll he'll lose the point he needs to get into the end zone. So he can't score this turn, not with this player anyway. He'd have to he'd have to take out Duncan, which he can. Uh, and if he can take out Duncan, then it's two GFIs to score. Icebreakers on turn seven. They mark the sorceress. She's the witch elf who is the receiver on the icebreakers 12 yard line. Oh no, that's not the GFI you want to take. Spends the reroll on a GFI. That's it. The icebreakers have no rerolls remaining for the half. Oh, scary, 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 scary. Two die block on Ferlane gets a push. Oh. Probably takes a yeah, two die block on Skeletor gets a pal here. Can he get the nine plus? He can get the nine plus. Gets a great stun on Skeletor. What now? What now? What now? He can't blitz Duncan. I mean, he can. If he gets the pow on Duncan, he's fine. The problem is Duncan's a blitz, uh, a blodger. And so one die, one die blo uh, blitz, it's not likely.
I think he wants to stand up Kristoff. Well, I don't know. Maybe maybe he doesn't. I don't know. He's a blodger. I, I, I view blodgers as invincible. <laughs> Carefully considering what he wants to do here. 40 seconds left. No re-rolls. Oh, he's going to throw the bomb. Oh! <laughs> bomb explodes harmlessly. Twenty-seven seconds left. Is he gonna go for the one die blitz? If he goes for the one die blitz, he has a one in six chance of it of getting the roll that he wants. Five seconds to go. We could just try to dodge away, but he didn't have the reroll now. He is gonna go for the blitz. That's not going to do it. Both standing results not going to do it. Turn seven now for the Masters of Mammal. Holy moly. No rerolls for either team. Two die block on Eric the lineman is a push. Doesn't follow up. I imagine we'll be seeing a two-die blitz on the Duke of Wesselton. But he is also a blodger. And if it's going to be with a frenzy player, then he's going to have to do something about Hans. He's going to have to take Hans out of the equation and set up some assist on the follow-up block. Just going to go for it. All right. Coming in from the other angle. Two die block. Dodge push. Oh, he's got tackle. Well done. I've never seen the ball scatter so much in my life. Ball scatters out uh, up to the 10 yard line. Out to the right <laughs> on the 10 yard line. <laughs> Sandwich between. Between three Norsemen and a an Elven Blitzer, He-Man himself. Oh wow! Good dodge into a GFI with Tila. To get the assist, two die block on Eric, the number three lineman. He's going to get pushed behind the ball. There's only three players who can score for the Arendelle Icebreakers. That was one of them. They can no longer score. Two left, Francis the second and Oaken, the number five lineman. Oaken currently marked. Francis is not. It's the assist for the two die block against Citrone, the number eight, Old Mariner. Leaps in Duncan. Where does he want to go? Where does he want to go? Three seconds ago, he's going to keep Duncan where he is. Good dodge by the assassin. It's the Pal and Citrone. Doesn't break armor, and that might be it here. Final turn of the ball game. Oh, of the ball game. Final turn of the half. Turn eight for the Arendelle Icebreakers now. The ball is sitting on the ground. On the Masters of Mammals 10 yard line. This is the Icebreakers half on offense. Can they score? Will they use their their wizard? I'm not so sure they will. Two die block. They got the pal on He-Man. He-Man, no longer a threat. They're gonna free up the ball with the uh, with the uh, block push there, the chain push. Really well done here. Ball's now free. 
So it's gonna have to be a handoff. He can't. He can't pick it up with Francis II and score. But he could pick it up with Lieutenant Matias and hand it off to Francis II to score. He also has uh, Oaken, but I don't think Oaken is the uh, is the safe bet. SPB here with the emergency GFI warning. Thank you for the bits. I don't think he has a choice here. I think it's going to be a a handoff to two GF <laughs> two GFIs. And he has no rerolls. Oh, he went with the dodge and said so. He's not going to score. Not going to score. That's going to be a turnover. Turn eight now for the Masters of Mammal. Can they get this ball back and score? Two die blitz on Eric, the number three lineman. He gets a pal here. He's going to clear two opposing players off the ball. Francis II still marking. Breaks armor. Only gets a stun. Has he not removed a single Norseman? Wow, he has not. Under a minute to play in the first half here. Masters of Mammal, they don't have a reroll remaining, but they're looking to grab this ball, get it, try to get it downfield to Tila. I'm sorry, to the Sorceress. Try to score if they can it can at all help it. Fail the dodge. That's not gonna do it. <laughs> That'll be a turnover. Zero zero is the score at the half here. The Masters and Animals will be on offense. They're gonna be down just a single player. One man player advantage for the Arendelle Icebreakers. And there's Boomer, the secret weapon, getting called off the pitch. The Icebreakers are going to be on defense now. Icebreakers do not have a kicker. But both teams are going to be back up to three re-rolls, and more importantly, the Icebreakers still holding on to this, uh, this wizard. Man, the Icebreakers would love, would love some rain <laughs> or something. <laughs> Getty at mid-pitch. Eating up the entire width of mid pitch here with uh, disturbing presence. Maybe, uh, remember, disturbing presence is still in play even if the Yeti is knocked prone. Masters of Ammo don't have anyone with guard, so it's going to be tough to get these blocks off. He's made it easier on the right side now. He's got the two die block against Eric, the number three lineman. And then he can try to convert that into chain, into not chain blocks, but 
convert that into a block and now this he can assist and then a block and then he can assist and so on. Five man offensive line for the Masters of Mammal. They're up against a three man defensive line. You can see that uh, the Airedale Icebreakers choosing not to screen out these dwarves. He's giving up the sidelines. Boy, we'll see if that's a mistake or not. These, uh, did I say dwarves? <laughs> these elves. They're very, very fast and they're very high agility as well. Here's the kick. And it's a blitz. The Icebreakers. Get a free turn with anyone who's not marked. So the three linemen stay put, but everybody else gets a free bonus turn. That includes anything he can do in a normal turn. He can blitz. Probably is going to try to... Well... Yeah. Probably going to blitz Stinkor here. Takes a mark on Stinkor. Takes a mark on Duncan, the number nine blitzer. He's done that with the guard, Ulf Werner. Moving players across the line of scrimmage. Getting very aggressive with this defense here, but has to be careful. Man, one gap in this defense, and these elves can just run away with the ball. Icebreakers repositioning their defense here. Have yet to take the blitz. Here comes the blitz. He's going to take the blitz on number eight instead. Gets the pal right out of the gate. He'll have to follow up. Didn't break armor. Knocked down old He-Man. Good job here to try to preserve his line. Takes a mark on Ferlane, the number three lineman. The number three uh, left tackle very very deep kick ball's going to rest on the opposing 22 yard line over in the right wide zone turn 9 now for the Masters of Mammal 5 linemen 4 backs 1 to receive Stands up He-Man. Takes a stab on many faces. Failed the stab. Also, when you look at a wizard, especially new new players to the game or maybe players that aren't used to dice, you look at the assassin, you go, oh, man, I'm going to I'm going to murder everybody. Uh, and then they, they see their stabs fail and they go, oh, man, the assassin's terrible. Why am I? Why do my stabs fail? Um, no, the, the assassin's good. So your odds of taking players off the pitch are dramatically increased because you you don't have to make the block roll, but there's no penalty to the, the armor break. What, what you tend to be seeing, well, or what new players tend to see is they'll take the block roll and uh, they'll get, say, a push and they'll internalize that as, oh, that was good, and then move on. And then they'll see an assassin fail the stab and go, oh, that was bad, and then move on. Uh, but, but an armor break against an AB7 player, 
uh, is always going to be a, a 40, 42-ish, 42-ish percent chance of success, which is not in your favor. And then the odds get worse uh, when you're trying to stab players with more and more armor. But assassin stab is, is very is a very good skill. It's a very good skill for trying to remove players. Uh, what you're what you're losing with stab is when you're rolling block dice, you can try to reposition players. You can try to use that push to to push players aside or or maybe surf them or something. Good Frenzy Blitz to KO. The number nine Berserker. First removal for the Masters of Mammal this game. 10v10 on the pitch now. And the Blitzing Sorceress is going to move down pitch to the opposing eight yard line over in the right wide zone. One die blocked to round things out will be a knockdown on Eric, the number three lineman. Breaks armor again. Gets a stun. Ball is in the hands of Ram Man, the number 10 Blitzer, who is a blodger. It is on the Masters of Mammals' own 18-yard line. Arendelle Icebreakers. Their first official turn this half after the free Blitz kickoff event. Two die Blitz on the Sorceress. It's going to be a dodge push. Frenzy follow-up, two dice. Got the pal. Good use of frenzy here. Breaks armor. Oh, couldn't remove the witch off from the pitch, but got a stun. Piling on. Didn't work out. <laughs> Piling on hasn't been working out this game. <laughs> but it's a fantastic skill combined with Mighty Blow. And then if you combine that with Claw. So if you combine Claw, Piling on, and Mighty Blow, Claw treats everybody as if they have an AV of 7. So you need an 8 plus to break armor. And then you get a plus one on that armor break roll if you need it. Otherwise, you get a plus one on the injury roll. And then if you fail either one, you get to re-roll either one, right? So basically, you're getting a plus one on your armor roll. Good knockdown here. You're getting plus one on your armor roll. So if you're up against, uh, we'll take the same example, 87. You've now gone to a favorable block. You've gone to a 50, 58% block. Oh, he got the removal there, too. Two removals? Wow. One man player advantage for the Arendelle Icebreakers. Uh, it, it, um, I'm sorry. If we go back to the example of the Navy 7, now it's a, a positive. Uh, the odds are in your favor to break armor just with uh, Mighty Blow, right? Um and then you break armor and you're going to get two rolls of the injury uh, roll because of piling on. It's 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 really gross. <laughs> Good shadowing follow up here <laughs> to keep marshmallow marked. Wow. <laughs> Ah, uh, many faces is gonna shadow Marshmallow. <laughs> See that block over in the left wide zone? Be a dodge push, frenzy follow up. Both standing result. Defense is getting a bit scattered here. It's gonna have to be really careful. If the elves don't get by him. Kai two, Kai the second, uh, a weak point in the defense. Masters of Mammal are up on turn 10 now. They have the ball on their own 18-yard line. One-man player advantage to the Arendelle Icebreakers. Nine players on the pitch for the Masters of Mammal. He identify or uh, Elder Marino identifies the weak point in this defensive formation here. He takes a mark on Kai the second. If he's gonna open the hole, he's gonna need players to protect the ball carrier as well. Oh, 
I thought he was going to stab him right in the butt, but <laughs> stab works out this time. Gets an injury on Lieutenant Matias, all tied up on the pitch, 9v9. Good use of many faces there. And here comes the blitz on Kai, the second two die blitz. Has Mighty Blow. He's going to get a push. Not quite what he needed to open up the hole. Decided to follow up. But now, where does the ball carrier go? He has 40 seconds to decide. Wizard still on deck for the icebreakers. Fail to dodge by number eight. Decides to re-roll this. Decided he didn't want to follow up after all. Paid the price for it. Masters of Mammal down to two re-rolls. Comes two of the Witch Elf all the way over to get the two die block on Citrone. Wow, and he got the pow out of it. Well done. And so the ball carrier probably going to Got a Mua over here. Ah! Yes, indeed. 14 seconds ago in turn 10. Two players on the line left to action. I imagine we'll see some dodges here. Oh, I imagined incorrectly. Takes a one die block against the Yeti, who had mighty blow. <laughs> he rolled skull and paid the consequences now. So back to a one man player advantage for the Arendelle Icebreakers. The Masters of Mammal down to eight players on the pitch. Arendelle Icebreakers still have that wizard. They don't want to use it willy nilly, they want to use the wizard at a time where they can capitalize on it. Otherwise, it's it's 150k that went to waste. Repositioning the defense here. He's up against a faster team, so he wants to stay ahead of this ball. He's keeping the Sorceress marked. She does have jump up, so she doesn't lose MA when she stands up. Normally, it costs 3 MA to stand up, not for a Witch Elf. Oh, got the pow on the block and injured many faces. Wow. Two man player advantage for the Arendelle Icebreakers. Not only is many faces out for the rest of the game, he will be out next week as well. Anchor Ranger says Marshmallow doing work. Marshmallow doing work for for real. Marshmallow deserves MVP. <laughs> Masters of Mammal running out of players here. Two die blitz is going to be a push on Skeletor. He does have sidestep, so he'll get to decide where he wants to go. Frenzy follow up. Got the pal. The power of Frenzy Chime making real good Frenzy blocks here and got another removal. We talked about what this is what he wanted to do at the beginning of the game, and it looks like he's getting into his groove here now here in the second half. Three man player advantage for the Icebreakers. Just six players left on the pitch here for the Masters of Mammal. All that block and all that frenzy means you're rolling lots of block dice 
And you have the advantage of the block skill as well. I think the ranger says, as, as we know, elves only need three players to be effective. Dr. Minotaur says, six, too many elves. <laughs> too many elves. <laughs> Turn 11 for the Masters of Mammal. The offense, I'm sorry, the defense is right in front of them. Good two plus dodge. Good two plus dodge by Stinkor to get the jump up block. It's Francis the second breaks armor. Got a KO. Two man player advantage now for the Arendelle Icebreakers. Jump up not only means that you don't uh, lose your MA when you're standing up, but it means normally when you're prone, uh, normally when you block, you have to be standing to take a block. If you're prone, the only thing you can do is a blitz. Um, but uh, not with jump up. With jump up, you. Uh, have an opportunity to take a block while you're prone. It saves your blitz uh, for somewhere else in the pitch. Hank the Ranger asks, does He-Man have Dauntless? He does, but I don't know where he is. Is he on the pitch? Yeah, he does. He has Tackle, Mighty Blow, Block, and Dauntless. So he just needs one assist uh, to almost certainly get the two die block on the elf rainer. Going for a pass. Ooh. Passes the Ram man over in the right wide zone. Well done here by El Nuberino. The ball is now on the opposing four yard line over in the right wide zone. Trying to get away from these Norsemen. Two seconds left to reposition players he's got one wow two good dodges and a gfi and that is it that is the turn turn 11 now for the icebreakers like the minotaur says bolton i, I think i i think i agree <laughs> i think i agree takes a mark on the sorceress who's uh, protecting the front right corner of the ball carrier. Takes the mark with Marshmallow the Yeti. He has a blitz. Dead Freddy, welcome to the stream. Arendelle Iceberg is playing Perhaps, uh, I don't know if it's their, been their best game all season, but one of their best games uh, on stream anyway all season. Really been fun to watch all of these coaches play these teams, um, change their strategies, change their tactics. Um, man, I love this game. <laughs> I love this game. <laughs> I'm repositioning the defense here, trying to stay ahead of the ball. Has he lost his blitz opportunity? Ha! He blitz down a player, bolt the ball carrier, maybe try to recover here, but it looks like he's going to just try to reposition his defense instead. Here's that blitz. Gets a push. Oh, into a one die. He gets another push. I think that's the first time we've seen him reduce his block dice on a frenzy. Two die block on Tila. Gets a side uh, push out of this. Tila has sidestep. Now two die gets the pow here. He's really looking for the eight plus. 
try to get rid of one of these nuisance witch elves. Uh, nuisance witch elves, but that's hard to say. Nuisance witch elf. <laughs> but unfortunately, it didn't do it. Final block here. Gets the pow on He Man. Can he break armor? He cannot. Is he going to use his wizard? I can't imagine he will right now. Turn 12 now for the Masters of Mammal. Defense intact. Defense has player advantage. Defense has a wizard. Masters of Mammal down to two rerolls. We currently have the ball. On the opposing four-yard line in the right wide zone. The game is tied. Zero to zero. Masters of Mammal with just six players left on the pitch. Four of which are standing. Masters of Mammal have to win tonight if they're going to keep their hopes at making the cut alive. To die blitz on Kai the second gets a push. <laughs> Dead Freddy says, "Don't lightning bolt He Man. <laughs> He'll only get stronger. <laughs> you lightning bolt He Man, his strength goes up to six. Two die block gets a pal on Kristoff. This is gonna free up the ball carrier, but where to go from here? Where do you go?" Where do you go with so much of your team tied up in these assists and these blocks? Uh, you retreat, that's where you go. <laughs> I think that's totally fair. <laughs> Stinkor, the ball carrier, is going to retreat to the Masters of Mammals' own 10 yard line down the right wide zone. Probably ties. Does he dodge away Tila? Probably. Yeah, good dodge by Tila. Sends Tila down, bitch. <laughs> He's. All right, threatening this pass here. Good dodge by He-Man as well. He-Man and Tila. The Eternia duo, moving down pitch. Turn 12 for the Icebreakers. It's a GFI blitz on Stinkor, but he's not gonna get the second block if he takes it. Really, two GFIs. Two, two GFI Blitz on Stinkor. Did he get He-Man into position? Oh, he did. That is so gross. That is so gross. And Tila's in position too? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Gets players into position uh, against these these Elven receivers. They're so fast. Two die jump up. Block gets the pow on the sorceress. Can he break armor? Eight plus will do it. Couldn't break armor. Is he piling on to try again? This time does it. Gets a stun. Pretty good stun. Huh? We'll see if he can capitalize. Still has his blitz. <laughs> Tries his GFI with the Yeti. Didn't get through the loner roll, and that is going to be a turnover. That Yeti is still exert exerting that disturbing presence, though. So if there's going to be a pass, Stinkor has to get out to at least here. 
Has to get out to at least here. Well, he doesn't have to, but he, he would want to. He would want to anyway. He'd want to uh, get as close as possible to increase his odds. You do a quick pass, you get a plus two on the pass. A short pass is a plus one. A long pass is zero for a modifier. And a long bomb is a minus one. You know what? I think we're overdue for an interception. I think we're overdue for an interception. Outside of disturbing presence range. Does he have no more movement than that? Oh, he's going to hand off. Failed the handoff. Has to spend the reroll here. Wow. Failed the two plus handoff. Wait. Why did he pass? What? 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 I'm not sure what happened there. Fails a wild animal roll with Marshmallow. He's going to remain on the ground. After the failed pass. Why pass? So, like, if that was a pass to preserve the handoff, that means you would have been in, pa you would have been in the same passing range for the handoff. Oh, I see. <laughs> Roll double skulls. Has to spend the reroll here. Oh, broke armor on number five. Got an injury on Tila. That is good news for the Arendelle Icebreakers. Got rid of a stubborn witch elf. Is the oppo going to be spent? No. Is that five players now? Four players? Five players. Oh, my goodness. Five players left on the pitch now. For the Masters of Mammal. So that's a that's six minus three. Three man play advantage for the Arendelle Icebreakers. Got the pal he was looking for. Broke armor. Took a high dollar player off the pitch. He's got the player advantage. Not only does he have to stop the score, he has to recover the ball and score himself. He still has his wizard on the deck. One reroll for each team remaining. Here's the jump up blitz. Both standing result here. He can't spend the reroll. He really wanted to move with this ball uh, with this blitzer. He might still do. We'll see. He says, "Nope, I'm good." Turn 14. Three turns left for the Masters of Mammal to try to score. They have to win tonight, or they are eliminated from not only the Dungeon Bowl, but that'll be the end of their run this season. And it's been a great run. They will, of course, play in Week 7, but uh, they won't be able to advance. And Week 7 will be their final game of the season if they don't win here tonight. Ooh, jump up, two plus dodge by the sorceress. The last remaining witch elf. I think that was a children's novel. Sorceress moves down pitch. She's in scoring position. She's on the opposing 12 yard line. Dodges onto the ball. Good pickup. Good dodge again by Duncan. Oh, three plus, three plus, two plus. Needed no rerolls. Gonna hand off to the sorceress. Good handoff. The sorceress now has the ball on the opposing 12 yard line. Man, oh man. Three plus, three plus, two plus dodge to a good handoff. It's 
sets up what a little of a cage he can here with his free players. Has 29 seconds left. Hank the Ranger says, I declare shenanigans. It's an elf team. That's what they do. <laughs> Their MO is shenanig shenaniganery. All right. Pretty solid cage here. Failed to dodge with number one. I have to imagine we're going to see a bolt. Maybe a bolt on number nine and then go after the ball carrier. We'll see. Gets to the wild animal roll to reposition Marshmallow. Doug the Minotaur says you, you cannot let them shenan once or they will shenan again. <laughs> it only takes one shenan, just one. <laughs> so he didn't bolt at the beginning of his turn. I'm very surprised by this. I don't know how he plans on stopping the score without it. He can still wizard at the end of his turn, but you can't wizard in the middle of your turn. Maybe he blitzes number nine, then bolts the sorceress. That might not be bad because she's a blodger. She's not a blodger. She didn't have block. Still, AV7 versus AV8. That might be good for the bolt. And then he can move a player into position. Here's the Duke of Wesselton down pitch, threatening his own pass. Blitz with Kristoff. Has to be. Has to be a blitz with Kristoff. Blitz on Duncan. He needs a pow out of it. Oh, he's got Frenzy. He can surf Duncan. You can surf dunk in here. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. He's got the push. That's one. That's one. He doesn't need to re He's thinking about rerolling this. He doesn't need the reroll. Yeah, even though it's in... Oh, I spoke too soon. I was going to say... Oh, no! <laughs> right, well, what I was about to say before the game so rudely corrected me, <laughs> I was going to say, he doesn't need the reroll there because uh, even though it's a one die, he just needs a push. He just needed a push. Oh, boy, the Masters of Mammal are going to score. Wow! Heartbreaking for the icebreakers there, but... Really well done by both coaches there. Well done by El Nuberino to get in a position to score there after losing so many players and Chime fighting so hard to stop it. Really, really well played. Do you think that blitz was a good call there? Uh, or not not spending the reroll on that first uh, first roll was a good call. Unfortunately, uh, not spending the wizard was was an error. Unfortunately, how many did Masters Mammal get back? Everyone? Wow, Nuffle Nuffle sure favors people. <laughs> Eight players on the pitch for the Masters of Mammal. Versus one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> wow. Wow, how the tables have turned. Two man player advantage for the Masters of Mammal at the end of that drive. Oh, no, no, okay. Right there. I was like, where did all the players go? <laughs> they blended in here <laughs> with their own logo. 8v8 on the pitch. The Arendelle Icebreakers with two turns to score. They could do it, but they've got they've got a book. 
They've got a book. They do have their wizard still, but they have no rerolls. Arendelle Bre Icebreaker is to set up. I think they don't even worry about the line here. I think they set up. They've got to put three players somewhere in one of these seven spaces. But yeah, I think this is a good play. I think they just shift to one side. They just go for broke. They do have their wizard. If this defense wants to come in on his cage, I mean, that sounds like a fireball target to me. No reroll for the breakers. It's gonna hurt them. They're gonna have to hope the dice work out. He is gonna go on his set up on the line though. He is gonna go toe to toe with the line. He's gonna try to block down these players. That's uh, that's fine, but uh, I mean he's got to move to score. Here's the kick. <laughs> did I did I say Nuffle favors favors certain certain teams? I. I'm sorry, Great Nuffle. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know nothing but chaos and chance. <laughs> Nuffle, you know nothing but entropy. <laughs> Very good kick here by uh, the Masters of Mammal. Icebreaker is graced by Nuffle with a reroll. They've got to move if they want to score. They've got 13 spaces to move. Hans the Berserker can move six. That means at least one GFI. There's a GFI by Citroen the Ulfwainer. He's in scoring position. He's also marking Whiplash. Hans the Berserker also in scoring position. Two die block at the line. Gets a push. He's got to pick this ball up. He's... Oh, God. This is so scary. Gets the knockdown here. He has to pick this ball up. Another two die block gets a push or gets a knockdown. Breaks armor. That's a great stun. Skeletor effectively out for the game. This frees up Kai the second to move down pitch as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ooh, 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 so scary, so scary. Fails the GFI. Is he gonna reroll? He is gonna reroll the GFI. Oh! Reroll the GFI. Oh no! The Duke of Wesselton is stunned. Oh! Oh, that's not what he wanted to see. Dang, the Ranger says never GFI. <laughs> What was the GFI for? Just for just for distance? I think I guess if it was just one GFI, he could have made that a quick pass. So I guess that's that's what he was going for there. One GFI to make that a quick pass. Masters of Mammal gonna try to shut down this scoring threat. Two die block on Citrone. Gonna reposition players first before he starts rolling dice. Good action order. Gets a push on Citrone. I think the problem here is that I think Marshmallow with his disturbing presence is going to get in the way. <laughs> Two die blitz by the sorceress. We'll get the knockdown. 
Oh, that's the AG3 player, so now it's all up to Citrone. <laughs> it's all up to Citrone. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Put the fireball right here. I believe in Citrone. He'll stand, the rest of the <laughs> the rest of the elves will fall. <laughs> Oh, how dare you? How dare you try to steal this ball? Oh, oh that's dirty. <laughs> that's dirty play. Dirty play. Final turn of this game coming up. Turn 16. Arendelle the Icebreakers. Are they going to use their wizard? This is the time to use it. Do it. Stick the fireball right there. <laughs> He's got a lightning bolt. Ah! Ah! <laughs> oh, that's gonna. I don't think anybody can get. Well, he can, he might be able to get on the ball, but boy, what a what a what a play this is gonna have to be. It's gonna have to be a blitz on Ferlane to a pickup to a one two one two a long pass to a handoff to a whole bunch of dodges to a GFI to score. Man. <laughs> the outlook is grim here. Try to lightning bolt the ball carrier. Tried to GFI here to knock down the ball carrier. Failed the GFI. That's going to be the game. The Masters of Mammal are going to win this one and keep their hopes alive this, uh, this competition and this season. For Lane, the MVP will level up for the Masters of Mammal. The Airedale Icebreakers will have Francis II level up as well. He is the MP MVP for them. The Masters of Mammal held onto this ball for most of the game, but uh, the Airedale Icebreakers did a really, really good job on defense. Both both coaches really put on a good show this evening and uh, really, really well done, I think. Masters of Mammal will pick up 11 SPP, as will the Arendelle Icebreakers. And we'll take a look at the schedule before we leave. One game left to be scheduled this week. It'll be the Blood Isle Fanes versus the Crimson Corpse Comrades. Duke Lamorne versus Amon Thought Ep. Uh, that is Necro versus Undead, I believe. Um, uh, that has yet to be scheduled. And is the final game to be scheduled here in week six. Just one week left in regular play this season. That'll be week seven after that will be the cut to top four for the Dungeon Bowl. And once the Dungeon Bowl is resolved, we've got Blood Bowl number three coming up. When that final game gets scheduled for week six, you'll be able to get uh, to check out and get alerted to those schedules on our website at mammal.club. That's M-A-M-L dot C-L-U-B here on Twitch or on our social media pages on Twitter, Mastodon and Facebook. You can listen to our podcast, Mammal Talk, where we just released an episode about what makes Blood Bowl so fun. Uh, you can listen to that in your favorite podcast app, and you can also watch previous games on our YouTube channel. Man, play Blood Bowl. Where else? <laughs> where else could you punch He-Man in the face? <laughs> you can play Blood Bowl via Blood Bowl 2 and Blood Bowl 3 on Steam and in tabletop form at your friendly local game store until the final game of week six. Take care, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your Wednesday evening. <laughs>